Welcome into Payoff Pitch, Action Network's Major League Baseball betting podcast presented by BetMGM. Brendan Glasheen joined this morning by Sean Zarillo and Charlie DeSterco for Monday, June 10th, Best Bets. You can hear Best Bets every Monday, Tuesday, and Friday morning during the regular season. So subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen to your podcast. You can also find the video version at the Action Network YouTube page. Please subscribe to our channel. We, uh, we've encouraged you, if you haven't done so, to leave your five-star ratings and reviews. We greatly appreciate those. It proves you are tuning in uh, to, to what is a grind of a season, Major League Baseball. So we're making our way uh, to the middle of June. Uh, congrats to Brian B001. Brian, B-R-I-A-N, B001. You are a winner. Email podcast at actionnetwork.com to claim your prize. Uh, we'll keep doing giveaways as the five-star reviews roll in. Uh, we'll give out, we're doing action swag, which I can't tell you exactly what the swag is. That's why you have to send the email or a one-year subscription uh, to an action pro account. It gives you all the access to all the good stuff that the app has to offer. Ten, uh, seven game slate on this Monday, June 10th. Not much going on. Uh, the first game of the night is Tampa and Baltimore at 650. Once again, a series that moves through the weekend into the beginning of a week. Um, I've noticed that a lot more this year in Major League Baseball. Anyway, uh, we'll get to, I'm sure we'll get to almost all these games. Sean Zarillo, what do you got for a best bet on this short slate? Take the Tampa Bay Rays at plus 113 or better. Or sorry, at a plus 123 or better. Projected this closer to plus 113. You can get some plus 130 or higher as of right now. And I think Ryan Pepio is a pitcher with a lot of upside. And I don't think the gap between Pepio and Corbin Burns is as big as you might expect looking purely at their area, right? Or just judging off of what you expected them to be coming into the season. Burns up to second in AL Cy Young on. So he's pitched phenomenally well this season. Expected ERA of about 2.7. He has been lucky with his batting average on balls in play and his strand rate, but he's a guy who's going to generally defy those luck categories considering he allows a lot of weak contact. The Baltimore Orioles play pretty good team defense, and he's also a guy who's going to ramp up or ramp down depending on the situation and add or subtract a little bit of his velocity depending whether there's runners on base or uh, he's pitching with the bases empty. But that said, this stuff plus rating for both Corbin Burns and Ryan Pepio, identical this season at 117. And since Pepio came back from the IL, he took a line drive off of the leg and went on the IL. It wasn't a shoulder issue, which is important to note. It was just the leg contusion. But since he came back, he's posted a 119 stuff plus rating, which is ninth amongst all starting pitchers. His issues command. His command is around league average. The location plus ratings are around league, league average. Uh, Corbin Burns has better command. He allows less hard contact, and he also has a higher ground ball rate. So he keeps his home run rate down, and that's the biggest difference between these two starting pitchers because Pepio has the better strikeout rate. They have very similar strikeout minus walk rates, though Pepio has the advantage there as well. The difference is mostly the fact that Burns puts the ball on the ground. He has a 50% ground ball rate, and he doesn't limit, or he limits home runs. He doesn't allow home runs. So that's the biggest difference in their profiles. Other than that, uh, Burns 274 expected ERA, Pepio 287. So a pretty narrow gap in terms of that expected ERA. The expected FIP is within a half a run. In terms of how I project these two out, there's some projection systems that would put a full run on the season-long ERA projections between the two guys that have Burns around a three, Pepio around a four. I make it closer to about six tens of a run on a season-long ERA. And I think as Pepio continues to progress in his career, as his command gets better, he has the upside to basically become one of the best starters in the American League. Like Corbin Burns is right now. He is five above average pitches per pitch modeling metrics, all at a 114 stuff plus or higher. So not even above average, like five potentially elite pitches just needs to figure out that command, needs to optimize the pitch mix. But the upside is there for Ryan Pepio. So raise today, plus 123 or better. We're going to keep trying to get the Orioles with a plus money home dog. And uh, yeah, the Rays just kind of underperforming to this point. Their offense really isn't putting it together. But I expect at some point they will get it going. And uh, I mean, Randy Rosarita has been abysmal. Uh, they finally got low and Lyle back and hitting in the same lineup together. So at some point soon, the Rays uh, should have their best run of the season. All right. Charlie, you want to weigh in here? Because I think you have something on Tampa, too. We can just we can just go there now. 
Yeah, I mean, they're my underdog. So if we're, we're looking ahead toward underdog, they're, they're the only yeah. money line play that I like of the entire slate. Uh, and I think the tail end of what Sean kind of was talking about, yeah, the pitchers are pretty much close to similar. Pe- Pepeo has been more unlucky with that 67% strand rate. Um, but the Rays and their offense, I think, is the biggest thing that I think is going to change in the coming weeks, getting low and low back, having the ability to also stack a ton of lefties against the right-hander Burns should also pay a bit more dividends. And you look and dive into the numbers of relievers over the past couple of weeks, and these bullpens are kind of similar. And I think even the Rays might have the higher upside when it comes to bullpen management and bullpen in general with Kevin Cash. So, you know, this is just a a very high number. Plus 137 was last night. I think there's a 135 still in the market on Tampa Bay. Um, This number just should be closer to that plus 110, 100, which Sean was saying. And, just going to continue to suck it up and, and buy the Rays. They're eventually going to click that. At least you think um, everything about them shows that they're going to bounce back. And you look at this lineup and how well they performed, or I guess how poorly they performed. It's only a matter of time you'd expect before the, all these guys start hitting. Sure. Hope so. I agree. It's one of the win totals. I really liked from early in the year when we discussed in our preseason uh, podcast previews. I mean, they're only what they're 31 and 33. Their yeah. their win totals was was five hundred, so it's like they're around there right now, and they're completely yep. underperforming, at least from the offensive point of view. And and they've dealt with plenty of injuries. I mean, Pepio was just returning back from injured too. Uh, I, I wouldn't be too worried about them. I think it's only a matter of time before everything clicks. And plus, it's avoid a sweep today. The, 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 there's definitely going to be an extra oomph from Tampa tonight. Okay. All right, how about a best bet for you uh, on this shorter slate? Where are you eyeing? today charlie yeah going to uh toronto against milwaukee and i'm taking vlad guerrero over one and a half hits runs rbis uh he's the best blue jay against right-handed pitching this season a 139 wrc plus you look at his month over month just stats and he's finally starting to just absolutely crush the ball 60 percent hard hit rate this season 99th percentile of all hitters and in the month of june he's over this number in six of nine games hitting nearly 330 with a 937 OPS, all the underlying metrics were there for Vlad. He's hitting the ball hard. He was barreling the ball, just wasn't yielding results. Uh, I think this is a great spot against Colin Raya, uh, bottom 5% pitcher and expected batting average near 300. He gives up a lot of barrels. He's not getting the same chases and whiffs as previous years past. He's actually got a career worst 16% strikeout rate. And he's due for some negative regression, a 556 expected ERA versus a 356 actual. So two runs separate Raya from expected to actual just buying Vladdy here, continuing to buy him. He was a guy that I had taken as a long shot flyer on to lead the league in hits. He really struggled out of the the month of April. And now he's, he's on that first page on, on the hits leaders inside like that. I think it's like the top 20, 25 guys. Uh, and, and even if you look at his underlying metrics, a 301 expected batting average, a near 500 expected slugging. His actual numbers, 292 and a 424 slugging. So he should be slugging the ball more. I think we see some extra base hits possibly from him. If not, you know, he'll he'll be on base. He's he's, a, he's been a hit machine of late. I think at least he'll get one hit and have a chance for the RBI slash run. And, and given Ray's profile in general, would not be surprised to see Vlad hit a homer. Not doing triple sevens today because it's a seven-game slate. So Vlad is my favorite, you know, batter altogether when it comes to the matchup. All right, let's find out if we're going to fade the public today. Uh, this one's not too surprising based on where the public money is going. 91% of the bets, 91% of the cash on the Minnesota Twins home hosting the Colorado Rockies. Paddock is on the mound for Minnesota. Dakota Hudson for Colorado. Total is at eight and a half. Are there other ways, Zarillo, of because uh, we like I think last week we had a situations where the Rockies were home dogs and we discussed the history of how they have done pretty well as a, as a home underdog um, going back years, you know, 20 years, a 20 year sample size. They are on the road in Minnesota. Uh, any angles here to possibly ignore a Minnesota side? So I did bet the twins for the first five innings, but the value is out of range. So not worth delving into too deep, but there is still value on the under for me. And I don't necessarily love betting the under under to go to Hudson start. In fact, I showed value on this under last night. I just wanted to check the park factor adjustment when I woke up today. And of course, the total did move down from eight and a half to eight. So clearly some sharp buying 
on the under overnight, despite the fact that Dakota Hudson is on the mound because this guy has a 544 expected ERA this season. He's last in strikeout rate among starters who have thrown at least 100 innings over the past three seasons. He's about, uh, he's in the bottom 10 percentile for strikeout minus walk rate among all pitchers over the same span, just allows a ton of batted balls. And that is not going to hurt him as much in a park like Target Field as it might at Coors Field, where Coors Field just has that massive outfield and everything that is poked over the infield's heads ends up falling in for a hit. Well, not going to hurt him as much at Target Field. Also, the wind blowing in today, so should limit home runs a bit for both of these pitchers. I also think Chris Paddock has been a bit unlucky this season. He has a 526 ERA, a 4.2 expected ERA, and pitch models like him even more than that, putting him at a 105 pitching plus figure because he has elite command, just gotten tagged a little bit. Showing uh, an above average uh, changeup and curveball. Always had that really good changeup. Been trying to find a third pitch. His slider is actually the new pitch this season. So it's interesting to see the curveball popping up in terms of pitch modeling metrics. But the slider not rating as well. It was performing well earlier in the season. It is getting hit a little bit more of late. He has been shelled in his past couple of starts. So continuing to limit the walks, I think, is a good sign for Chris Paddock. Should give him a high floor. He's still going to have nights where he gets shelled, but I think this is the offense where he's likelier to get a bit easier of a matchup. The Rockies 29th in weighted runs created plus this season. They're a bit better against lefties than they are against righties. So potentially a good matchup for Chris Sale tonight. Projected this total closer to 7.8. So the under 8 to minus 105 would be a bet for me. And as I said, the Twins in the first five innings as well at minus 202 or better, but I doubt that comes back into range. Mr. Disturco, how about you as it pertains to the uh, Rockies visiting the Twins? And the Twins are a heavy favorite. Yeah, I lean toward Royce Lewis total bases. I might, you know, dabble in it. I wanted his over one and a half hits runs RBI. It's it's two and a half plus money right now. Not going to dabble in that. But Royce Lewis, I mean, the man is absolutely incredible when he's healthy against right-handed hitting, right-handed pitching last year. He had a 164 WRC plus and a near 300 isolated power. He had 183 plate appearances against right-handed pitching, had 14 home runs and a near 40% extra base hit rate. Sean talked about his struggles, or at least Hudson's struggles um, with his expected metrics and how he doesn't generate strikeouts, so he really relies on putting the ball in play. I think it could be a good spot for Royce Lewis, who has absolutely crushed every single side that he's faced. I just don't know, you know, given the park factors and everything that I'm going to end up playing it. But that would be where I would go. Royce Lewis, I think, has one of the better hitting matchups on the board today when it comes to opposing pitchers and just their success overall and, and splits. When Royce Lewis is healthy, he's the best player on the field. Yeah. I don't care who's playing. I don't care if Otani's there. I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> Royce Lewis is a freak. I mean, when is this guy not hit? Yep. It's unbelievable. He comes back off knee injury, just goes right back to hitting. Like The playoff run he had last year was extremely impressive. He's the only thing keeping Minnesota's offense going. And yeah, I would love to see this guy stay healthy because he is MVP upside if he can stay healthy for a full season. He was 80-1 to 1 coming into this year. Uh, I think some of our people gave him out, and I wasn't going to argue against it. But I, I would love to see Royce Lewis stay healthy for a full year because he's a legit MVP candidate. If he, does. Yeah, if he started two for two with a homer and then hurt himself, like <laughs> I, if he stays healthy, he has so much upside. And like, I think that he even lends back to homer immediately. Yeah. I think it lends itself to him possibly being undervalued as he returns back from injury, clearly hit a home run in his return. So it's not like he's struggling with his power or whatnot. So yeah, I think it's a good spot that you could buy him in. Um, could buy him. I wouldn't be surprised if he hits a homer tonight. Uh, you know, Hudson has a higher ground ball rate than normal. So yeah, it's like one of the things that's kind of holding me back, but uh, it's not like horrible conditions for Royce Lewis to do something. But yeah, he's he's a freak of nature. Wow, how about this for uh, that's a hot take on a Monday podcast here for Pay Royce Lewis is unbelievable, man. I I, I it, it shocks me like because he's not huge, right? He's it's like kind of an average size guy, but he's so much pop in that bat and the speed and. Unfortunately, as he continues to get knee injuries, it's just going to diminish, you know, one aspect of his game. We, there's so many players throughout baseball history, Grady Sizemore, who've just like been hampered by injuries despite immense talent. And he feels like, unfortunately, another one of them. So I'm, I'm hopeful he can continue to stay healthy from this point forward, but it's unlikely 
given the past knee injuries that he's you know going to play healthy into his 30s. But hopefully we get at least a few good peak years from him because he's he's such a fun player to watch. All right, let's do underdogs. We know Charlie's already. He's got the Rays. Zarello, how about you? One more underdog for me, the San Francisco Giants and Kyle Harrison. Uh, projected this money line at about minus 102. So plus 103 or better would be a bet for me. Obviously of home field advantage, but they also have the bullpen advantage in this matchup. Basically ranking top five by every expected metric I like to look for. Expected FIP, strikeout minus walk rate, stuff plus. The Astros closer to league average, 14th to 17th by all of those measurements. They have been a little bit better over the past 30 days, Houston, ranking closer to 7th or 8th by all three of the same categories. But uh, Ryan Presley, I believe unavailable tonight after working multiple times. Josh Hader blew a save yesterday. So the rest advantage when I handicapped it last night did go to San Francisco. What's odd here is I've been betting on Spencer Arigetti and betting against Kyle Harrison in recent weeks. And I'm taking the opposite approach here. And I've been downgrading Kyle Harrison and I've been upgrading Arigetti, you know, over that span where I've been betting on and against them, respectively. Arigetti had an ERA over eight through his first five starts. He's three and one with a 355 ERA through his past five. I thought he was due for positive regression, but that said, I don't think he's a particularly good arm. I still think he's a below average starter, below average fastball, doesn't have good pitch modeling metrics, below average pitching plus rating, stuff plus rating. He basically has a slider, an above average slider, and that's it. His one above average pitch, everything else rates at 99 or below. And the command is basically fringe as well. So I think Arigetti can be an effective starter, but he's going to be more so of an innings eater for this Astros team who now needs innings uh, with Urquidy getting season-ending surgery and Javier getting season-ending surgery. So they just need innings from Spencer Arigetti. And I think it's a you know just another of the contributing factors why I'm not super high on this Astros team. There just isn't the upside that we saw coming into the year. But Kyle Harrison continues to be better at home on the road. I think that is the saving grace here. It's not something I'm necessarily adjusting in my model yet because the sample isn't necessarily sufficient for him you know, just a couple of years into his career, but he has consistently shown a better strikeout minus walk rate at home. It's not just the ERA or, you know, the expected FIP. He's just striking out more hitters and walking fewer batters at home than on the road. 18.3% at home, 11.3% on the road. His numbers this season are very much in those ranges as well. Um, You know, his fastball velocity is down this year. His stuff plus rating is down this year. He only throws a fastball or a slider like 90% of the time. And if you're going to be throwing a fastball, that's not as good as it was last year, but still throwing it 60% of the time, eventually batters are going to hit it. So I have my concerns about Kyle Harrison, but that said, you know, I'm still betting numbers. I've downgraded him. I've upgraded Arigetti. I still make the Giants slay favorites at home. I think the bullpen advantage is enough to overcome the other concerns. And basically at this point, you know, having upgraded downgrading them respectively, I basically make them, very similar pitchers in terms of expected effectiveness. So Giants minus 102, but that down to plus one. Sean, um, I'm curious, it, like going back to because the Kyle Harrison splits, the home road really are interesting. Do you think it's one of those things because it's he's pitching in a park where he can maybe because he, he's a fly ball pitcher that he like is more confident attacking the zone and lending itself to contact because there's less home runs obviously hit at Oracle Park compared to other fields that he's less familiar with like I, I yeah that that's my assumption is I mean one mountain comfortability like some pitchers are just going to be better at home than on the road just just going to be more comfortable sleeping in your own bed right. etc but with Harrison I do think there is something to like knowing if he gives up a long fly ball it's not going to hurt him at home nearly as much as it would on the road so he probably feels a little bit more free to be aggressive throwing that fastball in the zone, knowing that it's not going to, you know, get turned around on if he throws it to a lefty. CJ Abrams hit a ball a mile against them, you know, timing that fastball. Like it happens, it's going to happen, but he's going to get it away with it a little bit more at Oracle Park than it will at other venues. So yeah, it very much could be a confidence thing and just, you know, feeling free to put his pitches in the zone when he's at home because he knows uh, Oracle Park, I believe, has the lowest park factor for home runs of all parks in baseball. It's just very difficult to hit the ball out there. Okay, again, it's a shorter slate, so uh, not much today. Sean, you got one more for us. We already discussed uh, Charlie had a player prop angle on Vlad Guerrero Jr. for Blue Jays and Brewers, and you like a total here. Yeah, hopefully no home runs for Vlad. (laughs) Uh, For my purposes, uh, the under 8.5 
between Milwaukee and Toronto. This is another total that's moved down from eight and a half to eight overnight. So probably getting a little bit out of range, but I projected it in a similar spot as that Rockies twins total closer to 7.7. So if you can get a plus money under eight, if you can get eight minus 105, I think those are both okay. Um, neither, or I, sh- I shouldn't say neither of these offenses. The Jays offense has really struggled this season. The Brewers offense has been top five all year. And I've even tried to break it down by splits more recently. They're still like eighth, 10th against righties, against lefties over the past 30 days. They rank much better against righties on the season than they do against lefties. They've actually been hitting better against lefties of late. And they're still hitting almost as good as they have been all year against righties. So I don't know what's gotten into this Brewers offense with this group of players that they have, but they are absolutely raking. That said, both of the bullpens in this game should be pretty, pretty or relatively uh, well rested. So both had essentially a couple of days off at the end of last week. Uh, The Blue Jays faced one batter on Friday. I believe they were off Thursday. They faced one batter on Friday and Saturday because, uh, They had Bassett go into the ninth inning. Then a reliever came in, gave up a walk-off home run. And then Gaussman threw a complete game shutout between those two days. So first complete game for Gaussman in Mm -hmm. his career. First shutout in his career. Pretty shocking stat there. Um, So, and Gaussman, just just as a quick aside, Gaussman this year, awesome until he gets the two strikes. Then he can't put hitters away. So clearly struggling with his splitter or something because he's getting absolutely destroyed in two strike counts. Other than that, he looks fine. Anyway, going back to this game. Um, so Gaussman Bassett really saved the Blue Jays bullpen. They had to throw six relievers yesterday. Nobody threw more than 17 pitches. So all of their key relievers are rested for today. The Brewers had the off day Thursday, and then they basically got a near complete game uh, on Friday. Their key relievers also pretty well rested for today. They threw some of them on Saturday. They threw their B relievers yesterday so their a relievers their a bullpen is available for today so i do like this game to stay pretty tight once you get to the middle to late innings i don't love colin ray charlie already went into ray he's overachieved to a significant degree this season jose barrios also overachieved this season 2.8 era 4.4 expected era and he's another guy who's typically better at home than on the road he's kind of fixed that in recent years but i've never been a jose barrios guy i've always viewed him closer to a league average starter. So just know that I'm not high on either of these starting pitchers. And yet I still show value on the under in this matchup. I just like both bullpens. And I like the fact that both are extremely well rested for this game. So under eight down to minus 105 projected this closer to seven and three quarters. And uh, hopefully Charlie gets a couple of hits. from Yeah, singles, no runs. That's all we need. And uh, I was going to say. Single double play, yeah, single double play. That's fine by me as long as the bet gets through. And uh, I will say. You say Kikuchi might be trying out for the NFL soon after that absolute no. layout of Tyler Soderstrom, huh? <laughs> did, did you see that, Brendan? That looked like a scene from Major I League. I I was, it. it was just so poorly timed. Like, it's like he ran right into it. I mean, sometimes people, you know, <laughs> you'll see somebody like, you'll see somebody get trapped in a spider web, like, you know, 20 feet away from you, but you can't see the web. So that it just looks like they're freaking out for no reason. And you're like, what's wrong with that guy? You say it looked like he had no reason to get up and run away from that ball. It wasn't going to hit him. Everybody else in the bullpen is like looking at him like, where are you going, man? And he just slams right into the fielder. So incredible job by Yusei Kikuchi becoming a, a viral baseball meme for all time. He's a linebacker. All right. With that, <laughs> look at that. A couple, couple, of, couple of takes to wrap up the show. Plenty for people to consume. And um, yeah, inside joke. All right, that's it. Uh, don't forget to download the free award-winning Action Network app. You can follow Charlie and Sean there. Uh, Sean's column opening pitch in the early part of the week. Later in the week, Charlie will have triple sevens. Uh, nothing today, but a few looks. Uh, and more specifically, a look at Vlad Guerrero Jr. for today. Also, check out the Action Network Discord channel. There is a link uh, to the channel in the episode description. If that is something you might be interested in uh, to check out, we have Payoff Pitch coming your way again for Tuesday Slate. June 11th, uh, that will be recorded tonight. So be on the lookout for that first thing tomorrow morning. For Sean Zarillo, Charlie DeSterko, Brendan Glasheen, thanks for tuning in. Payoff Pitch is Action Network's MLB betting podcast presented by BetMGM. Best of luck, and we'll talk to you next time. 